Stonecross Mill began grinding foodstuffs in 1876 and finished working in 1937, except when it was enlisted as an observation post and gun emplacement during the Second World War as it looked out over the Channel. The brick tower and ironwork within it withstood the ravages of time well, but the wood both inside and outside suffered as the years passed. By the time ownership of the Grade II star listed building was transferred to Stone Cross Mill Trust in 1995, the mill looked a ruin. But members of the Trust started remedial work and fundraising, and a generous award from the Heritage Lottery Fund meant that professional mill rights could be employed to restore the mill to working order by early in the year 2000, looking like it does on your screen. In the decade that followed, volunteers have done all they can to preserve and improve the mill, as well as producing flour, but after ten years the depredations of time meant that they needed the help of professionals so they could check, repair and replace where necessary important wooden structures. As a result, on the 10th and 11th of January 2011, a familiar and picturesque site near Eastbourne was carefully decapitated so that work by volunteers could continue at ground level. Two of the sails had been removed for repair in 2009. On January the 10th, 2011, work began on the 3rd by attaching it to a crane and unbolting it from the stock which holds it in place so that it could be effortlessly lowered to the ground. Next, the horizontal stock had a rope attached for helping to rotate the assembly and the stocks were pulled round to place the fourth sail, already attached to the crane, into position for lowering. The crane then took the weight of the vertical wooden stock and the wedges which held it in place were removed from above and below the black metal canister on the front of the wind shaft. The first wooden beam was then lifted clear and lowered to the ground. Next day, the crane was attached to four points on the base of the cap and very slowly took the weight and began the lift. The wooden cap might look to be a lightweight structure, but inside it are its base frame and massive beams which take the weight of the stocks and sails and the huge iron brake wheel which drives all the machinery inside the tower. Now you can see the bottom of the brake wheel and can imagine how it reaches up near the top of the cap. Opposite is the worm gear which connects the fan at the back to engage with gear teeth around the iron curb on top of the tower on which the cap runs on small wheels to keep the sails headed into wind. Lastly, to protect the tower from rain and snow while volunteers work on the cap and fan stage, the stocks and the sails, the work crew has made a flat cap. The Mill Trust is a charity. The trustees are unpaid and there is no charge when the mill is open for visitors. The Trust welcomes new members to support it, and the work crew, also unpaid, welcomes new members of their team, whether or not they possess particular engineering and carpentry skills. The next major job will be the surface of the tower. Making and keeping it white has proved a formidable challenge but the Trust is working on a practicable solution.